All right, all right, all right. It's the David Washington Show, your host, David Washington, yours truly. So I'm going to jump right into it. Hey, this podcast is called Listening Your Way to Power. So it may be a little bit deceptive. Uh, however, I think you'll understand once I get to my final point. Um, but I, I want to talk about uh, some events that I attended um, or uh, conversations that I've had recently. And I want to let you know that with all the technology that we have access to, one of the best things that a campaign, a candidate could afford to do is listen. And not just listen, but listen with purpose, with intent. And so I was reading an article about deep canvassing, and it goes beyond just calling or or knocking on the door and saying, hey, vote yes on four. Here's our information. Contact us for any additional information. Vote for four. Here you go. And then off to the next door or to the next voter. No, 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 no. Deep canvassing or deep listening is a technique where volunteers, campaign workers, even a candidate, when you're talking to a potential voter for your cause or for your candidacy, you actually take the time and you're actively with the tent listening to the concerns of the voter. Yes, it's time consuming, but I assure you when it's done right, it's very effective. And so I want to get to why I'm bringing this up and, um, what I've learned, and it does deal with this, the vote yes on Amendment 4 on Tuesday, November 5th ballot, the Florida constitutional ballot, okay? And the conversation does stem around, these conversations that I've had do stem around Amendment 4, one of the six constitutional amendments here in 4. Yeah, I'm sorry, in, in Florida. And so um, the first situation conversation was at the Pancakes and Promises, a speed dating for candidates uh, type of event that was uh, sponsored by the East Orlando Chamber of Commerce, where candidates will go from table to table, like in speed dating, um, and introduce themselves to... Uh, business owners, voters, tell them about their campaign, answer any questions, et cetera, et cetera. The second event uh, was the Orange County Watch monthly meeting here in October, monthly meeting, where we had the chair of the Orange County Republican Party, Aaron Huntley, and the chair of the Orange County Democratic Party, Samuel Viches Santiago. They came together in a forum to discuss all six of the Florida constitutional amendments and all 10 of the Orange County charter amendments that will appear on Orange County residents' ballots or voters' ballots on November 4th. And then the last event, number three, was actually occurred at my home where a volunteer for the vote yes on Amendment 4 initiative came to my door, knocked on my door, and we had a conversation about vote for, voting for Amendment 4. So let's start with the first Um uh, conversation. That first conversation uh, was with candidate for state representative Nate Douglas. Uh, he came to our table at the Pancakes and Promises event, and uh, he told us about himself. And I, I've known Nate. I've known this campaign, uh, so a lot of what he was saying was very familiar. Until he started talking about his sister being pregnant, and he said. This is why he is in support of Amendment 4, the abortion ballot initiative here in Florida, um, was because 
not just an incident with his sister, but it, this particular situation, a conversation where his sister supports his support for Amendment 4, um, he learned that she was, you know, pregnant. And um, I don't know the full context of the conversation. I don't know why she was pregnant. I don't know everything that was talked about in that conversation. However, Nate Douglas did share with us parts of that conversation. And what he told us at our table was that he asked her, and maybe this is one of many questions that uh, he asked her uh, when he learned that she was pregnant, what are your plans for the baby? So that can be taken in many different ways. Um, are you getting married? Are you going to terminate the pregnancy? Are you having the baby? Are you doing this, adopting the baby out? Or I don't know. I don't know. Again, I don't know the full context. However, what he did say did hit me a certain way. Um, and I would typically think that, you know, one of the first things out of my mouth would be, oh, congratulations, yay, for you and, you know, whoever and ever. And maybe that did happen. I don't know the age of the sister. I don't know anything about the sister, the circumstances. I'm just saying right now what was said by Nate to our group, and it struck me as peculiar. And thus was part of the basis for his support for Amendment 4, his sister's right to choose her decisions to make her decisions regarding her reproductive health okay so be it so be it okay great that's great now okay i'm thinking all right okay maybe there's some context more context that he's not willing to share um i'm hoping that everything will turn out okay uh however how it was presented to us made me question the support for Amendment 4. Next situation. This was at Orange County Watch. And again, uh, we had uh, DEC, the Democratic Chair Samuel Feches Santiago and Republican Chair Aaron Huntley come together in the forum to discuss the Florida Constitutional Amendments and the um, Orange County Charter Amendments. That's the Orange County Constitution, so to speak. And so when it came to Amendment 4, you know, when they started talking about Amendment 4, the ballot initiative for abortion, uh, I wanted to ask, what is the definition of viability? And I think I may have asked that. What is that up to like the, the, the ninth month uh, of pregnancy, the third trimester? What What's viability? And, um, you know, I, I don't think I asked that time um, because I, there was a, a large group of us um, who had questions and wanted to, and as the chair of the organization, I wanted to make sure that members of the Orange County Watch uh, had their opportunity to ask questions in regards to the uh, 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 constitutional amendments. And um, Samuel's support for the amendment um, he used an example from his own personal experience, and he was telling us that his mother was pregnant. Again, full context, I don't know. I don't know the full context of the story, okay? Um, so I want to make that very, very clear. Um, he told us what he told us, and I'm just, you know, giving you my experience in that particular situation. So I, I don't know how old his mother was at the time. I don't um, I don't know how old he was. I don't know the circumstances of the father uh, or their family unit, I, except for that he did say that he and his sister were there when she was pregnant. They, 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 they were already a family unit. And so he said his mother was pregnant and again, not a lot of detail about who the father was or, you know, the circumstances of the pregnancy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I believe he did say that she, because of their particular circumstance, uh, whether it's their socioeconomic 
situation, um, the health of the mother, the health of the uh, baby, um, the decision was made, if I understand correctly, because I am, suffer a little PTSD here, um, the uh, pregnancy was terminated. And um, I was grateful that, you know, Samuel did share this personal experience. He personalized his support for Amendment 4, just like Nick Douglas at the Pancakes and Promises event uh, personalized um, his support for Amendment 4. And again, context means so much. It means so much to me because I want to know the details so I can make a better decision. And granted, neither conversation uh, uh, persuade me from my position. I've always stated that a woman should have the right to choose um, for uh, her uh, reproductive health, including abortion. We all should have the choices uh, to make, our own choices to make for our health care, period. That's my stance. Um, however, again, this conversation is like, hmm, I wish I, 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 I had better understanding of the context of, her, of uh, Samuel's mother's decision making um, to make a decision on what I would vote for or be able, because I'm in the persuasion business, be able to explain for or against voting for the abortion ballot initiative amendment for here in Florida. Okay, so then the third situation, a little bit more personal, personable uh, or, or personal uh, occurred at my front door. Um, this happened about maybe 48 hours ago. And all this happened um, is Tuesday, uh, August the 8th, I'm sorry, October the 8th. Uh, we're waiting for uh, uh, Hurricane uh, Milton to make its way. It's nice and sunny and warm um, on my balcony. Um, however, the, situ the Pancakes and Promises event was uh, Friday. Saturday was Orange County Watch. And so the Sunday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, I had someone knock at my door. It was raining out, and I, I was surprised that it was a canvasser, a volunteer, who handed me this palm card. And she solicited my support for Amendment 4. And we had a little bit of detail. And she went to through her usual uh, introduction, um, her her standard conversation about supporting um, Amendment 4. She said, you know, voters like me, uh, our support is, is, is needed. Um, I know that she knows that I'm a super voter, uh, that I am a Democrat, Chicago Democrat, but I am a Democrat. So, of course, uh, she's knocking on the doors of Democrats, Republicans who may have indicated that they support this amendment um, and also non-party affiliates. Um, regardless, uh, I'm a super voter. I have my vote by mail ballot on my dining room table. Sorry, mom. I'll hold on to it as long as I can until election day. Um, however, she, this young lady, uh, probably in her 30s, um, she had the usual, you know, stance. Uh, she was several feet away from my door in the middle of the corridor. And uh, she, you know, was on point. And I said, you know, thank you and everything. Um, you know, but I'm good. I, I know what the issues are. This is what I do. And, you know, I try to say, you know, thank you and, and goodbye. But she was persistent. And I was like, okay, all right, we're going to have this conversation. Let's do this. So we started this conversation and I explained to her who I am and what I do and that I'm very familiar with the whole process of uh, getting Amendment 4 on the ballot 
and I've been following its progress. I've been following what uh, the challenges are to Amendment 4. Uh, I also informed the young lady that uh, I've been following the court cases um, in regards to the 15-week ban that was challenged and upheld by the Florida Supreme Court. And then, because that ban was upheld, the six-week ban was upheld by the Florida Supreme Court because it became automatic once the court challenges to the 15-week ban was upheld by the Supreme Court. The six-week ban remained in effect. And so we get into this nice little conversation and, um, you know, she's very persistent. And I said, well, you know, this is one of the reasons why I did not sign the petition to put this ballot initiative on um, the November uh, ballot. And it's because I was very concerned about the definition of viability and the language of the ballot and also the amendment and its supporters, particularly its supporters, did not address individual Floridians' right to the freedom of individual privacy, the privacy of the individual. Now, I've talked about this in past podcasts, and uh, you should check this out. Um, I'll try and put those uh, podcasts, or at least one of them, in uh, the show description. Uh, however, with Com, uh, Comstock uh, case, uh, the Comstock laws um, that were passed during Prohibition um, coming to the forefront of the U.S. Supreme Court and also Clarence Thomas statements about uh, more or less that we're not entitled to any type of freedom of privacy of the individual. And that means that things like um, interracial marriages, um, same-sex marriages, um, the ability to receive um, abortion medication through the mail, individual privacy issues that we take for granted are now on the table. In Florida, we do have the right to the freedom of information, of our own individual information, being free from government interference. And I'll let the lawyers talk about that. However, the freedom to personal privacy, individual privacy, no. And that's something that I care a lot about because I want to keep government out of my personal business. What happens with me in my home, my loved ones belong to me, not the government. And so my decision not to support putting this initiative on the ballot was based in those two things, the viability and also the freedom of individual privacy. And so I, you know, we're, we're going back and forth in, in this conversation. And then she says something that really struck me hard. She's like, David, don't get into the weeds. Like, excuse me? Don't get into the weeds over this ballot initiative. And then later, someone else told me that, too. I was like, well, wait, wait, wait a second. You're, you're talking to an informed voter. And our conversation made that very clear. I think she wasn't prepared for this conversation with me. And this is where, you know, liberal or, 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 or conservative. But I'm going to speak to the liberals right here because they knock on my door and I deal with them in this particular situation. I'm grateful that we had this conversation for, you know, about maybe 10 minutes or so. However, despite my insistence that, you know, I know where I stand on this, 
I get it. You're trying to persuade me. And then when I tell her, I know what you're doing because I do the same thing. This is who, who I am. This is what I do. I appreciate the persistence. But then when you drop that statement about don't get into the weeds, this is a disservice. This is a disservice to your effort to get this on the ballot and the disservice to the voter. I want people that look and, 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 and uh, look for information about who to vote for and why to vote for them. I, I want them to have access to as much information as possible so that they can make good decisions for their families, for themselves and their communities. I, I want that to happen. And I want them to get into the weeds because the devil's in the detail. And to take this particular initiative and this particular conversation and looking back on the conversations at County Watch, at Pancakes and Promises, when people are more candid and they're not really listening to what they're saying, a very intentional listener, a very purposeful listener, it's going to pick up on, the, on those nuances. It's going to get into the weeds and listen very carefully and determine how are they going to use that information to vote? And I always think when I'm knocking on someone's door and I'm talking to someone over the phone or even with my network of podcasts, that there may be one person who's listening to me at that time, but I don't know who that person is and what their network looks like and who they're talking to. So as always, I, I let people know, do the research. Be intentional in your conversations and be intentional in your listening. Because sometimes when you're in the weeds, you're going to find something there that's going to have such an effect on your life, maybe not now or maybe later. But details do matter. And that's what I think makes a better voter, a better citizen, a better human being. And for campaigns, candidates, influencers, electeds. Be more intentional in your conversations with those that support you and those that don't support you. Because I can tell you, at County Watch, even at the uh, Pancakes and uh, Promises event, there were people who I talked to after those events and they said, wow, they I, I'm considering changing my position on this particular amendment or that particular amendment. Amendment. So there's always an opportunity, even to the last voter on the last day of campaign, to persuade someone to change their mind. It's just a matter of being intentional and doing it. And I want to thank you all for being intentional and sticking around for 25 minutes to listen to what I had to say. Um, this is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And uh, please like and comment. Uh, of course, I love to hear what you all have to say. So please comment. And uh, I enjoy uh, responding to you all about what we're talking about, what we're discussing.
and what matters to you, what matters to your families, and what matters to your community. I'm David Washington. This is the David Washington Show. We'll see you the next time. We're out.